Hey, what is up everybody? Here's Matt Sick once again, and in today's video we're going to be showcasing Monty Verdi from Hack the Box. <clears throat> this is a Active Directory based machine. Super interesting, I liked it a lot. It's a medium based. And uh, I think we can learn several things, a lot of things. Uh, some, of, uh, some of it would be like lateral thinking a bit. So let me just walk you through the, as always, the uh, parameters that I used in the end map scan. And um, you will see here that I use tag PN to tell the end, uh, to tell end map that the host is already up and running. Tag SV will append this column, this version column right here, performing a service version detection scan. The C appended to it. It's a shorthand for another parameter, which would be tag as C, but you, you can just quiz them and um, it will run several uh, like checks that the nmap scripting engine has, such as this one. So HTTP server header, HTTP title, uh, obviously 5985, it's not uh, an HTTP base, but we will talk about that later. And over here we have uh, the results of the script for the SMB service, right? <clears throat> so, um, more, moreover, uh, we have minimum rate of five packages, 500 packages a minute. Uh, this is because we are in a over a VPN, so that would be super slow otherwise. And I think, well, at least my experience, uh, 500 packages, it's just about right. I've seen a lot of people, a lot of other people using 5,000 or even more. Uh, but it, yeah, I mean that amount has just made me lose a lot of information, a lot of packets on the wire. So 500 is just good for me. Also, we have tag n to disable DNS resolution, and tag p tag to scan the whole range of ports that are available over the TCP/IP protocol. That is 65,536. You see here 16 because this is just about TCP filter or closed ports. While if you add these open ones up, you will see you. I mean, that, that'll do the math, right? Uh, also, we are saving the output to a file called general inside a, inside a directory called nmap. And there's our IP. So now on to the results, we have simple DNS plus, which is, uh, well, the DNS server on, on port 53. Uh, we also have Kerberos on, on 88 that will help us uh, in order to like brute force or user enumeration. Um, that will go a long way. We also have RPC. Uh, well, 445 would be uh, SMB. Held up, and we have a domain over here. So I just added it in my ATC hosts file, which is kind of my DNS, my local DNS server. So here you see the IP, the domain, and you would see. Okay, yeah. And we have what else we have? Um, well, some other for RPC. Held up once again. Just some endpoints. 5985. Now we're talking about this one. It's um, Windows Remote Management Service, WinRM, but is detected as an HTTP um, based protocol since it, I mean, it uses HTTP and it can uh, use HTTPS, that is SSL TLS. Um, and that's just it, right? Here are some other endpoints. Obviously, I encourage you to always look every port up independently, just in case you're missing something out. Maybe you see some port you think you can you recognize, but you actually don't, and you miss something useful, right? So, um, how did I find that Monteverdi subdomain? So, there's a cool tool we can use which is dick in order to query the dns server so we just need to specify an ip here for example we could do something like this i'm going to be using a uh, cloudflare's dns server which is 1111 and i could query for example google.com 
right? And I can't, I don't want to see any DNS record. So that doesn't give him much. Let me try a a a eight. There you go. That's because I don't know. I mean, it should work on Cloudflare's DNS, but uh, maybe there is something out there, a, a rule or something. 8888 is the Google's DNS server. Now we can see a lot of information here. Obviously, you will not get anything out of Google with this, but in some cases, you could try. You could get. Um, you could recover some information or something that can give you a hint about uh, the system, the architecture, the, the way your, your, the pen testing, your, the company you're pen testing is built, right? So in this case, the local DNS server is on my IP and I'm going to be using, um, what was it? <laughs> Forgot it. Oh, Mega Bank, Mega Bank that local, right? And I need to specify. Okay, so this is the IP. I'm gonna be doing this, and we can see we have a, an A record which is IPv4, and S which is named server. That's where I got the Monteverdi that Mega Bank that local domain from, and I added it as well in the um. It's easy hosts file and I also see a SOA which I honestly do not remember what it is and a four A's to, um, record which is IPv6 and so on and so forth that's it right we can also try a domain transfer attack which would do with AXFR and we see transfer failed if, if it didn't fail, then we would have been able to recover more information, maybe more domains that weren't supposed to be public, right? So, that's cool. And, um, well, just moving on, we will see the SMB server, right? So, we can try SMB map host B. And just like that at first. And it doesn't show anything, so at this point we can try with null, just like that, to use a null, um, null login attack. I forgot the whole name. Anyway, you can do whatever you want, it's not just about null. Null session attack, it's the name. <laughs> so we get an authentication error. Now we also had RPC, so we can uh, query it with RPC client the IP and the username, right? Also, we need back in to specify, hey, I don't have a password, please don't ask me for it. So now that we're here, this doesn't mean that we are actually able to query it. We just need to find out with some commands such as enum dom users. So let's do that. Enum dom users, right? So uh, that is cool. And um. From here, I'm just gonna be uh, hitting Control C to exit out, and I'm gonna be using C to command line and using using enum dom users, right? And with that, I'm gonna be performing several more steps. So, first of all, I'm gonna be uh, grabbing for. I mean, what I want to do is to uh, extract the. Um, Usernames, right, and put them in a file, .exe file. So I'm gonna be using this because I want to match exp a regular expression, and I want everything that is inside of this. So I think it would be something like this, but this won't work just because square brackets needs to be escaped. But once I do that, it should work. Or it should be like this. I don't remember. There you go. So this is just a um, like a regular expression to say, "Hey, I want everything." A dot means literally every any character, and um, the asterisk means everything, 
from there. I mean, grab any character, kind of like that. And the question mark means whatever length it is, right? So basically that means grab everything inside the square brackets, right? Now, at this point, I want to grab out any string with the zero X because I don't, I'm not interested into the RID uh, for now. And here I'm going to be using TR minus D to remove and square brackets, just like that. Both uh, opening and closing square brackets. And I have my users names, my usernames. Uh, so I'm going to be moving it to uh, valid users, right? Values, cool. With that, I could try uh, to check if we have Astrap Roastables accounts. So if you use the tool get MP users, you will see here several uh, like um, examples in order to use it, depending on some cases, whether you have a list, a single user, whether you have or not a password. In this case, we don't. So I'm going to be using the this last one. I'm going to be using uh, get MP users. Uh, that would be megabank that megabank that local. Um, no pass and users file. I'm going to be valid users. So that will check against the Carvero server, which is on port 88. And we see that does that any user has. The UF don't require pre auth set in order to perform a Astra Roast account. So, since we do not have a valid set of credentials, I mean, we are lacking the password for at least one of them, we can perform a Carver Roasting attack so far. So, at this point, um, we just have to start like brute forcing accounts, right? No, so, um, after a lot of trial and error, you would come to the idea of trying the users with the same. I mean, like for example, if I if my username is S Morgan, maybe maybe my password is as well as Morgan, right? Um, so this is just about a lot of thinking, like thinking outside the box, trying some things, trying an error. So we, well, how can we do that? So. We can crack map exec, though that would be super slow, but let, let us try curve root. We're going to try brute force mode. And we can specify user password trial. I don't remember how that is it. <laughs> let me try it. If not, I will be going with... um. With a uh, crack map exec. So this is this one. Domain is megabank dot local threads. Let me use three threads verbose and valid users. Password is blank. Skipping. Okay, so apparently valid users. So I'm gonna be using something like for user in add valid users do echo user no user user to crits and done a double a symbol does in order to Get the job done like that. Maybe that works. I will show crits. Okay, good. So look at this. Um, we have a guest user logged out. Probably not that logged out, but disabled. So you shall. We have invalid passwords, invalid password, but we have one. So we have a valid login with error, which is SA, SA batch jobs, right? Which uses the same password, SA batch jobs. Clocks two is still great. Q. 
That's the difference of time between my very machine, Kali Linux, and the domain controller. So we'll see if it get, if it gives us trouble. But with that, we have already a nice machine. So we can as that's that's like pragmatic set SMB my IP use savage jobs password savage jobs and and well I want to see and in case it works show me the shares. And uh, yes, well, it works. And let's see the shares. There you go. So we have an Azure uploads, uh, IPC, and then log on says vol users. And before that, before all that, I'm going to be um, checking if we can perform Kerberos syntax. So get SPN. Uh, what was it? SPN users.py was it like that i don't remember man spn no um get s or get user get user spn server server service principal name right so for that i'm gonna be using a target like megabank but local Slash, and I'm taking it from here, right? So, make a bang by local. My username is Savage Jobs. My password is Savage Jobs. And I'm going to be using um, request, which is request ticket granting service for users and output them in uh, John the Reaper or hash hat format. Let's see that. No entries found. So, well, unfortunately for us, we don't have any uh Kerberos account so let us inspect that like we see damn it uh, we see both that are interesting we have read permissions on azure uploads and on users in a sim the uh, uh dollar sign symbol so i'm gonna be trying both of those like smb client um azure uploads so I'm going to be saying use fourth backward slash just because it's Windows. Uh, because, uh, you know, one forward slash escapes the other forward, forward slash and so on and so forth. That's it. I'll, I'll, uh, as well as here. <laughs> so I have here my IP and the folder, right? And tag in because I don't want it to ask me for a password. And then it must log in successful, denied. Obviously, we need to specify savage jobs and a percentage sign in the game with a uh, capitalized capitalized capital U. So there, and we don't have anything. We are gonna be using users and dollar sign just like that. There, and I have a lot of things. So I'm gonna be going to contents, like mk mk their users, cd users once again here, and I'm gonna be using recurse recurse on to recursive downloads and prompt ah because i don't want it to ask me for every single file that it's gonna be downloaded right so from here you can do and get everything and well i was expecting a lot more not just one file but that's fine so we have inside them hope just only one file which is azure.xml and we see here microsoft azure commands active directory phd password credential sounds interesting and look at this password so fantastic um it bag nano uh creds yeah whatever yeah no nano creds So let me remove all this and over here as well we have savage jobs sa batch jobs and um m hope probably let us try that just like this m hope and inside i mean in between um single quotation marks let me put the password 
And let's see if we do have access there. So we do. Okay, that's, that's valid. A valid set of credentials. Same permissions. And let me try something here because I didn't check. I, re I just remember we had Win Windows Remote Management open. So what about we trying to see if that if that works, huh? We have instead of SMB WinRM. And we don't. And what about this guy from here? WinRM. And we do. And we received a pond pond right here. That's because we can't log in as in the system. It's not it's not like an SMB where you can I mean if you have a pond means you're an administrator with a specific set of permissions that will let you log in via PSXEC. In this case we can use a tool such as we have evil win RM. I'm gonna be specifying the IP. I'm gonna be specifying the user and help and then a password. That should grant us access. There you go. So we're here. We have there. I uh, want to see the flag. The stop. There you go. So just type it out. I'm going to be checking who am I all. So I have no privileges. Like I can exploit. I have a group. Asher admins. Free windows users. Nothing. Strange, but yeah, I have a Azure admins here, so that is interesting. Let me check. Well, first of all, I'm gonna be checking every single file from here. So I'm gonna be using cmd slash c to use the command line, uh, just cmd.exe, right? Instead of PowerShell. Um, also, I'm gonna be using their s b a minus d minus h minus d minus h dot to specify the current path i'm in uh, and i'm going to be fine string which is like a grep interactive um, case insensitive mode and v to grep out and i don't want to see any app data related file local microsoft vmware cache that would be good and all i don't want to see all users uh cache all I don't want to see that folder. Um, so we have Azure PS data collection profile, user.txt, some links in URLs. We could definitely check that out. Moving on, we can check the Windows root. And from here, we can program. We need, I mean, since there are two progress in here, like program files, program files x86. We can catch the first six uh, letters and use a well the sign and a one for the first one and a second for the other one. So let me go with the second one first. You'll see in 86 common files, ser SQL server, nothing that important. And in one, we have interesting things such as Azure Active Directory Connect, AD Connect Hill health sync agent ad sync and you obviously would want to look every one of them separately and we'll just go straight away with the answer so i look to check something like this so i i would do um azure active directory sync uh pen testing pen test just like that and I would find pen testing fundamentals. I would open that, right? I would check several uh, contents of this just to get a better grasp of what this is about. And look at this. When I click, like in order to um, look for a different thing, something just jumps out, which is Microsoft Azure AD Sync Exploit. Now, that might work, that might not, but we. Uh, we don't lose anything just by checking it out right so we can open this app sounds interesting and breaking the cloud via azure ad connect as well azure ad connect for red teamers xpn whatever 
Well, let me check the first one out. At first, the VB scrub. And um, let us read JAWS a little, a little bit. So it says, the Azure AD Connect service is essentially responsible for synchronizing uh, things between your local LED domain and the Azure base domain. However, to do this, it needs privileged credentials for your local domains that I can perform various operations such as syncing passwords, etc. I recently discovered a great video there. Uh, too long did read. Interesting. It's possible to just run some simple .NET or PowerShell code on the server where Azure AD Connect. Oh, I have this. AD Connect. Uh, is installed and instantly get plain text credentials for whatever ID account is set to you. So I'm definitely interested into this uh, block, right? There's also this blog post by XPN InfoSec. I think it's this one. That XPN InfoSec, so the same one. That provides more info as well as a working PowerShell. Okay. And I see here there's a download link for my compiled program at the bottom of this page. But here's the code for anyone interested. Uh, so that would be definitely, definitely interested to look at it. Just to understand what's going on behind the scenes. Uh, apparently there's this there's this tool ad decrypt which you can run with full sql uh will it will attempt to access the ad sync database on a full fat ms sql instance using windows authentication the actual connection string used is server local host database ad sync trusted connection true here it says this program must be wrong while the ad sync bin folder is your working directory or has been added to the path variable Okay, perfect. So I'm going to be going to this GitHub repository. Where was it? Here. And I'm going to be downloading it, right? So um, here I'm going to be going to exploits and I'll get when I'm ready. No, actually not. So let me just uh, move. Download AD. Decrypt here and zip it. Now we have two files, AD decrypt and then mcrypt.dll. I mean, we must need both, right? I'm going to be going to mhope uh, app data local temp. I'm going to be going to low. I'm going to be creating a super sneaky folder such as um I mean this look this doesn't look suspicious at all right oh I am K there let me go to a a there you go and from here I can uh Try to use your util.exe. Do we have it? Mm, probably. Have your cache split 10, 10, 14, 12. Slash. Let me use here. HTTP. Python 3 mhttp server. So I'm going to be sending it to 8000 port and then encrypt a DLL. Ah, it says access is denied, so we lose our time. So I'm going to be using the upload functionality of people with a RAM. So um, that would be home, Maptic, desktop, machines, lock the box. Monty Verdi, a lot of things, exploit and mcrypt.dll. That's cool. And um, also ad decrypt.exe. That was faster. We have both, both of them. And we need um 
I'll be running your AD sync folder. So I mean, probably AD Cobra one. And I want to go to, I mean, I don't know. Look at this. So I'm going to be daring everything, but everything again, and that will show me every, I mean, the contents of every folder. I want to see that being directory. Where is it? Here. So in Microsoft Azure AD Sync, bin. Cool. Damn it. Cool. Go there. Then you want to go here. All right. So let's go to bin. And now. <laughs> We should be able to run the file, which is here. AD the crypt. That exe. OSQL was it? Let us run it and. Gosh. So, probably just that's not that's not the <laughs> the place. I don't know. It ends in H one should be. Yeah, it wasn't H one. Uh, AD the crypt that exe or SQL. Now it's work and it worked. Look at that. It gave us it give it gave us sorry a pair of decrypted credentials. So we have administrator and domain admin yeah as a password. Pretty awesome. Now from here I want to check just directly if we have access over uh WinRM. We'll see user the help I mean what is going on cool so now let me exit out here because I want I don't want to de define that variable again so administrator because I don't remember the IP. So here, there we go. And cool, we are in. So probably in our desktop should be our flag. Look at that, root that TXT, just type it up. And that's it. That's it for today. And I hope you guys liked it. I think it was pretty interesting. It wasn't feel like a medium. For what I'm concerned, I mean, it just took a bit of googling, and yeah, you can learn a lot of this. Uh, and that would be it. I'm just gonna be wrapping it up, and I'll and I hope you guys liked it once again. And I'll see you later with another video. Thank you very much for joining.